Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take off an old heatsink, put new thermal paste on the CPU, and put a brand new heatsink in place of the old one. For this, we'll be using my other computer over here, which is Socket A, and we'll be putting this brand new copper 60mm heatsink in place of the old one. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so right here is the computer that we'll be putting the new heatsink in. You can see the old heatsink right here, and Pretty much the first thing we're going to need to do is I need to get down in that area right there because there's a little clip on the back of the heatsink that lets me take it off real easily. So in order to get there without causing too much trouble, I'm going to have to take out the power supply which will give me some extra room to work by taking out the four screws on the back right here and then just setting it aside and I'll have a little more room back in that area to work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you the next step. So now you can see that I've taken out the power supply and it's going there. And I've just casually set it aside right there on the other side of the case so I don't have to unplug all the cables. And now the next thing I'm going to have to do, well, this is really simple, I'm just going to unplug the fan so that I don't have to worry about that being there when I get the heat sink off. And the next thing I'm going to do is, if I can maneuver the, ca uh, maneuver the camera around here, you'll see right there, you probably can't see it, but I'll show you on the other heat sink in a second, that there is a little tiny clip right there that I can stick my screwdriver in and pull this heat sink off real quick and easily. Now, the clip I'm talking about is here on this heat sink. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. I'm sorry for moving it around so much. but. Um, it's this little clip right here, that little tiny piece of metal sticking out. Now, all three of these are attached to little clips that are on the socket holding it in place. And what that little clip on top lets me do is it lets me stick my screwdriver right down in there, open it and close it, open it and close it, do whatever I need to do to get the heatsink off or put it back on. And that makes things real simple and easy. So, now I'm going to go ahead back over here and attempt to set my camera right in here so you all can see me do this. Okay, so I've gotten my camera into a nice little angle so you can see what I'm doing up close and personal and know exactly what's going on here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, sorry for blocking out the light, I'm just going to stick my screwdriver right down in that clip, press down, you'll see that it opens up, turn it out, and there you go, the clip is off, and now the heatsink is free to move about. And I just need to wiggle this around a little bit to get it off the other side. And you'll see that the heatsink comes right off, exposing the processor underneath. Now that was fairly simple. And I'm not really going to do a whole lot with this heatsink. But you can see now that the processor is exposed. And I'm going to go ahead and take that out and set it aside because we'll need it here in just a minute. So I'm going to pull up the socket arm, which is right here, pull it up, which releases the CPU, and pull out this little baby right here, come on out, you can see it right there, yeah, and here, it comes on out. Now that we have the CPU out, we can continue on to the next step, which would be cleaning the old thermal paste off of the CPU, you can see we got some gunk going in and around there. And we're going to do this very simply by taking some Q-tips and dipping them in a very little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Don't need to worry about it harming your components. Isopropyl alcohol will not hurt the processor or anything that you get it on as long as you let it dry. <coughs> and so basically we just dip our Q-tip in isopropyl alcohol and get off the old thermal paste from on and around the CPU. Done pretty simply. It takes a few minutes, but it's pretty easy. And just flip over to the other side when you get a bunch of gunk on the one. And don't be afraid to press a little hard because this stuff can sometimes be difficult to get off. So, yeah, pretty much got the outside. Yeah, you can, there's still some residue there, but that's not going to hurt anything. And so now we're going to 
just take a little bit of alcohol and rub off the top of the CPU until it's nice and clean. And this takes a little bit, so be patient. And there we have a nice clean top of our CPU, and we can. I'm just going to try and get a little bit more of this residue off, just because it's ugly. And then we just take a dry end and just rub off the rest, make sure it's all nice and dry and not much alcohol left. The rest will probably dry pretty quick. And so now our CPU is nice and clean and ready to put the new thermal paste on. <coughs> so set this right here and I'm going to show you that I have some OCZ Ultra 5 Plus here that I'm going to be using and I can go ahead and set this out of the way so I don't bump into it and these q-tips can go over here too and now I'm going to pop off the cap you don't need a whole lot but and sometimes these things can be a little pain to get some thermal paste out of. This one's pretty hard to squeeze. But you don't need much, just a little tiny bit. A little tiny blob. I can get it out. Just around like that size. And yeah, it's sticking out the stuff is weird. And now we're going to take a flat object, which, hmm, I need to find something real quick. I'll be right back. All right, now that I have my flat object, which is going to be a popsicle stick, I'm going to take it and simply, I'm just going to flatten out the thermal paste and spread it over the rest of the core to make sure I have a nice, thin but even layer over the whole top of the core. This is not absolutely needed to do because just the force of the heatsink pressing down on top of the CPU would spread it out, but it's good to make sure you have a nice even layer over the entire thing because sometimes, depending on how you set down the heatsink, it could all spread on one side not the other, and that would not be all too great. But pretty much just get a nice thin layer just like this over the entire core which is just like that so there's no shiny parts remaining and this step isn't absolutely needed either but I'm gonna just put a tiny tiny dab on top of that to spread out with it Just a little tiny bit right there in the middle. Probably not even enough to see, but there you go, that's that. And I'm going to set my thermal paste over here to the side. And next part, we're going to put this back into the computer and put our new heatsink on. Okay, and the next step is fairly simple. We're just going to put the processor back in. Right, like this, make sure you have the golden arrow lined up, and it should just drop right in like that. And make sure you don't touch your thermal paste. It'll get messy and whatnot. We're going to put the arm back down. And now, we take our new heatsink, which I have right here. I'm not going to move the camera for reasons that you should be able to see pretty easily. And now I'm going to take it, and this is pretty much the only tricky part, because you just have to be a little careful. I'm going to use the clips on the one side to try to, yeah, see, this is a little difficult, but use the clips on the one side, get it on the other side, drop it down, like that, and then the same little tab clip, whatever you want to call it, that we use to take it off. We're going to push down and latch right on like that. It takes a good bit of force. 
Alright, there you go. And our new heat tank is in place and ready to be used. So that pretty much wraps up this video. What you'll get from putting a new heat sink on your CPU are improved temperatures, which can lead to improved PC performance if your old heat sink was causing your CPU to overheat. In some cases, you can even get a quieter PC from putting a new heat sink and fan on, depending on the type of fan that was on your old heat sink and the type that is on the new one. It really doesn't take much longer than the time of this video to take out the old heat sink and put a new one in. I know it's gotten dark outside, but that's because I had some interruptions in between the filming of this video. But I hope this has been helpful, and I will see you all again soon.